day everyone! My name is Jasmine Ramones from BSN 1D and today I will be performing an assessment of the cranial nerves. Cranial nerve examination provides information regarding the transmission of motor and sensory messages primarily to the head and neck. So let's start with the pre-introductory phase. So before I enter my patient's room, I have checked for the doctor's order, I have performed hand washing for accelerator the spread of microorganisms, and of course, I have prepared the necessary equipment that I am going to use, which is a pen light, a tongue depressor, a coffee, a snot and chart, and a cotton buds. Our efficiency as a nurse is ensured by the completeness and organization of our materials. So after verifying the need for performing the assessments, we can now proceed with the introductory phase. So in the introductory phase, first we need to introduce ourselves to the patient in order to verify the patient's identity and explain the procedure to the patient. Good morning, ma'am. I am Jasmine Ramones, your student nurse from Northern Christian College. Before we start, may I see your wristband, please? What is your complete name, ma'am? Juliana Ramones. How about your birthday, ma'am? November 11, 2007. Okay, thank you for that. So those are the two identifiers. Ma'am, before we start, how would you like me to call you today? You can call me Juliana. Okay, great. So this method is very important in order to enhance the connection between you and your patient and improve patient care. So after that, I will now going to explain the procedure of the assessment. Juliana, I will going to assess your cranial nerves, so I might ask you to stand up, to do some facial expression, to read this Nellan chart, and I will also light your eye, which is I will going to use this pen light to your eye, okay? And I will going to give you some set of instructions that you need to follow. Will that be okay, ma'am? Yes. Okay, thank you. Explaining the procedure to the clients can help reduce anxiety and enhance cooperation. Now, we must secure the patient's privacy. Juliana, will it be alright if I will go to close the door so that no one from the outside will be able to disturb you while we're doing the assessment? Sure. Okay, ma'am, I will now just close the door. Okay, ma'am, before we begin, may I ask if you are seated comfortably there? Yes. Oh, nice, ma'am. So, this procedure is very important because it involves protecting the patient's security. After all of that, we are now in the working phase. Here, we will be assessing the 12 cranial nerves. We are going to assess cranial nerve number one, which is the olfactory nerve. First, ask the patient to clear out her nose to remove any dirt. Ma'am, Juliana, what I want you to do is that you will going to sneeze on this tissue paper so that we can remove any dirt from your nose. Thank you for that, Juliana. So what I want you to do is to close your eyes and I will let you to smell something and say to me what is it. What is this, ma'am? Coffee. Very good. So, my patient has a normal olfactory nerve. But if you encounter a patient with an inability to smell or is not able to identify the correct sense, the patient has anosmia. Second, we are going to assess the optic nerve. I will be assessing two tests. Number one, I will be looking for the confrontation visual field by testing the peripheral vision for us to determine the function of the retina and visual pathways to the brain and optic nerve. Okay, so Juliana, can you please stand up for me and look at me? So what I want you to do is cover your right eye and I will also cover my left eye. I want you to look at this eye, don't look at my fingers and count the numbers or how many fing fingers that I will going to show. How many is this? Two. How about this? Three. Okay, we'll do it on the left side. Can you please cover your left eye? How about this? Four. This? Five. Very good. Second, we will test for visual equity using a Snellen chart to allow us to check how well a person can see the details of a letter or symbol from a specific distance. 
And what you're going to do, Juliana, is that you will going to position yourself 20 feet away from the Snellen chart and you will going to read what line can you see. But before that, I want to ask if you are wearing an eyeglasses. No, ma. How about contact lenses? Also no, ma. Okay, good. So before that, you will going to cover your right eye and read the Snellen chart. After that, you will going to cover your left eye also and then wear do both eyes. Do you understand? Yes, ma. Okay, can you please read it for me? D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. Okay, so line 8. Can you do the other left, other eye, which is the left eye? D E F P O T E C. Okay, same line, which is the line A. So can you please read it both eyes? D E F P O T E C. Very good. So Juliana, you have a normal eyesight because you read it from line A, which is twenty twenty. Next, we will be assessing the number three, four, and six cranial nerves, which are the oculomotor trochlear and abducens. The oculomotor is responsible for eye movement, upper eyelids, and the constriction of pupils. The trochlear is responsible for the movement of the superior oblique muscle, and the abducens is responsible for the movement of the lateral rectus muscle. Okay, to assess this, ask the patient directly at the eye. Juliana, I want you to look at my eye directly. I am inspecting the upper eyelids. They should not obscure vision. Observing now the pupils. Pupils are round and same size. So now I will be assessing for pupillary reaction and observing for the direct and consensual response. Juliana, I will use this pen light. And what I want you to do is look at my eyes directly. But before that, if it is okay, I will going to dim the light for the assessment. Yes. Thank you. So, what I want you to do, just look straight at me. Don't do anything. Don't move your eyes and just relax. I am now going to shine the pen light. Okay, constricted on the other side also, the left. Constricted also. Okay, so Mom Juliana, your eyes are, no, are normal because the pupil are constricted. Okay, so next, Juliana, I am going to put the pen light on the middle and I want you to do is don't move your head. Just follow this, this pen light where I will go. Just follow with your eyes. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, here. Very good. So, next, I will go into for four, which is the six cardinal fields of gaze to evaluate the six extraocular muscles of my patient. What I want you to do, Juliana, is keep your head straight. Just relax. Don't move your head and just follow where the, the pen light will, will go. Okay? Okay. Next. Very good. Very good. The assessment showed that the pupils are equally round, reactive to light, and accommodating. And my patient is normal. But if there is a misalignment of the eyes, which may occur in the horizontal or vertical or along the torsional axis, that will be strabismus. But if there is a rapid involuntary or rhythmic movement of one eye or both eyes, then there is a nystagmus. We will now assess the cranial nerve number 5, which is the trigeminal. The trigeminal nerve is both a sensory and a motor nerve that innervates all the muscles of mastication and mediates facial sensations as well as the sensory part of the corneal reflex. The mandibular, maxillary, and ophthalmic divisions should be tested symmetrically and first for pain. First, I will now go to test for the pain, sensation of pain. Okay, ma'am, I will use this broken swab stick of the cotton pads and I will going to poke this on your face and tell me if you feel anything. 
Sige, understand, Mom? Juliana? Yes. Okay. Yes. How about this? Yes. How about this? Yes. This? Yes. So, very good. Second, assess for the light touch. Same procedure, but I will going to use the dull side of the cotton pads for the light touch. Do you feel anything, mom? Yes. How about this, mom? Yes. Okay, very good. So third, I will going to assess for the cranial reflex. What I want you to do, mom, is that look on the look here without moving your head. Just look here. And I will going to put this cotton balls on the side. Okay? Just look here. Yes. Just look here, mom. Don't move. Mom, don't move. Just look here. Okay, so in the next, mom, look here. Okay, very good. So a normal person would blink and tear on the corneal reflex test. Okay, moving on, we are going to assess cranial nerve number 7, which is the facial nerve. The facial nerve carries nerve fibers that control facial movement and expression. Okay, Juliana, for this assessment, I want you to do some facial expressions and can you please close your eyes tightly? Can you smile? Can you frown? Can you pop out your cheeks? Can you, can you raise your eyebrows? Can you normal or can you relax your face? Can you relax your face? Okay, thank you for that, Juliana. So my patient has a normal facial nerve because she can make facial expressions easily. But if you will be able to encounter patients whose muscles on one side become weak or paralyzed, they are experiencing Bell's palsy. Next, let's assess the eight cranial nerves, the acoustic or vestibulo-cochlear nerve. This is a sensory which mediates hearing and balance. So first, we'll perform the whisper test. Juliana will be assessing your hearing and uh, we will be performing a whisper test. What I want you to do is close your eyes and I will go to cover one of your ears and repeat what I say loudly. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, pizza. Pizza! Okay, on the other side. Milk tea. Okay, very good. Next, we will be assessing the 9 and 10 cranial nerves, the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. They are responsible for the motor and sensory function of the soft palate, pharynx, and larynx. Okay, Juliana, I will now going to assess your mouth. But before we start, I want you to open your mouth and then say A for me. A. Ah. Mm -hmm. So check the quality sound of, the, of your patient voice, if it is hoarse or does it have a nasal quality. Next, I will going to assess the soft palate and the ovula. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So as I can see here, the soft palate are rising properly and they are symmetrically while the ovula is in the midline. So next, I will go to perform the gag reflex test. Juliana, I will going to perform the gag reflex and I will going to put the wooden tongue depressor on your mouth and I will poop the back of your throat. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry for that. You're gonna close your mouth. So in this test, you can see the soft palate rise promptly, the ovula is in the midline and the signs of gagging. Next, we will be assessing the 11 cranial nerve which is the accessory nerve, in order for us to assess the strength of the sternum, the mastoid, and trapezoid muscles. Okay, Juliana, what I want you to do is move your head side to side, up and down, and shrug against my resistance. Okay, very good. So, she does it with 
is so that nerve is intact. Next, we will be assessing the 12 cranial nerve, which is the hypoglossal nerve. Juliana, what I want you to do is stick out your tongue side to side. Okay, you cannot close your mouth. So, the tongue should be protruding straight with symmetry and deviation from the midline. We are now done with the assessments. For us to conclude the assessment, we must inform the patient that the assessment is done. Do aftercare and perform hand hygiene. Okay, Juliana, thank you so much for your cooperation. So far, the findings of your cranial nerve assessment are all normal. Do you have any other question? None. Okay, thank you. So, also, we need to document the findings of the procedure, summarize the information for the patient, and perform the aftercare of the equipment. 